Hi guys, my name is Daniel McLaughlin, professional search engineer with Jamf, and today I'm going to be showing you how to secure an LDAP server with a self-signed certificate, uh, specifically an Active Directory server. So if I go across to my Windows server here, I've already configured this Windows server as an Active Directory domain controller. Uh, see its name up here, DC01, and this is the domain that I'm using, jamfpro.services. I can even go to Active Directory here, and you see I've got some users and some groups. This is only a default LDAP though. This has not been secured with a certificate. It's still listening on the default port of 389. And I can show you that by logging in. I'm going to add an LDAP server here and I choose Active Directory and Next. I enter in the IP. If you're not sure how to get the IP address on a Windows server, click on the Start menu, type in CMD and open. And the command is ipconfig. Okay, so this is my IP address there, so I go 192.168.130.129. If I go next, my domain, which is Jav Pro, username, administrator, and password. That's authenticated okay, and I can test my users. That's found that's okay. Test my groups, so all staff, admins. See all that, not a problem. Go save. Now, however, this is only connecting it on 389, not using SSL. So a lot of organizations will want this to be secured. Uh, so what we can do is, we'll minimize it for a moment, and we can secure it. Now to secure this on a standalone one, you would go to your manage and your server manager there and add roles and features. Next, next. And we're going to enable Active Directory Certificate Services. This basically turns on the server to be a certificate authority where it can issue out its own. So we're just going to say certificate authority there and install. Okay, I'll close that. Now we do have to configure this service. Go next. We're going to enable certificate authority. We'll go next. Just leave it all as the defaults. And configure. Okay, great. So what that's done now is if we go to the start menu again and type in MMC. If I go to File, How to Remove a Snap-in, choose Certificates and Add, Computer Account, and Finish, and OK. If I expand out on this tree here, I can look in the certificates. I have a certificate in here. This is the CA certificate. This is like your root certificate. This is not the certificate that we need. To generate the certificate, Windows actually does some good work for you. So all we need to do is really reboot. So I go down to my here and go settings and restart. Just going to reboot that server now. Okay, server's been rebooted. I'll sign back in. If I go back to that MMC. I go file, add, remove, snap in now. I do the exact same thing. I go certificates, computer account, and finish. If I expand out that tree again, see I have two certificates in here. A new one, which is a dc01.jamfpro.services. This is specifically for this server that's been issued by the root CA. So you can also see its intended purposes is used for both client authentication and server authentication. So this is the certificate we want to export out this. So you right click on the certificate that you're after, you go all tasks, and export. Next, I'm going to use the DER format, and we go next, and choose where you want to export it to. Let's just call this LDAP S, and save, and finish. Okay, so we have exported out our certificate from our self-signed. 
that there, L.S. So if we open up a Jam server here now, now self serve self signed certificates are a little bit trickier. If we go in and we find our LDAP server here. So this is the one we had on 389. Now, if we weren't able to connect to this at all, we wouldn't know what this is. So let's change this to just be LDAP 389, just so we can tell the difference. If we pretend we didn't have this one at all, though, there we go, new, Active Directory. First thing to try and do is to get this server, the Jamf server, to try and connect to it on 636. So if we go 192 to the IP, let's just change this to be a one. It's an IP address that's not being used. When the connection times out, it will ask you to input the port. Okay, could not connect, let's try on the port. So let's change this back to nine and put in 636. It's able to successfully connect to it. However, we enter in the same details as we did before. Could not find user. And this is because it couldn't actually authenticate properly. This is because it needs that certificate that we've got here uploaded. So you can do this in two ways. You can go a manual configuration, and that's where you can tick the use SSL and upload. But you do have to then also manually enter in all of the mappings. If you do have an ability to connect it on 389, this grabs all of the mappings for you. So what you can do is two things. You can either clone this, we can say S636, change the port, 636, using SSL, upload the certificate, desktop, certificate there, if we go save, we should be able to successfully test a lookup, and we are, which means it is now communicating through SSL 626, manually trusting the self-signed certificate. Thank you for listening. Uh, this will be an OVA that will be available to download along with that certificate. And I will be also presenting uh, or providing a video on doing this with a third party certificate where you won't need to manually upload it. Thank you very much.